Hey, it's Scott Orna, Cruise Consulting, and today we're talking about what are the best banks for startups. And this is one of the most important decisions you make in the super early days of being a startup. You really need a, a, a good place to put your money to just kind of simplify it, but you also want a bunch of other services that banks can provide. So, so let's roll through the criteria. The first one in my mind is just products and services. So you want to have a good deposit foundation. You want to have a good money market account because a lot of startups, they raise a lot of money actually. And so you want to be getting at least some interest on your cash but you don't want to take any risk. You want like as little risk as possible and get some interest. You don't want to take a lot of risk and get more interest because that can really end up hurting you. You also need to have a good bill pay solution. Now, a lot of our clients use bill.com, so that's not critical, but some of the new startup banks have started building bill pay solutions. And of course, some of the older firms have that too. So that's a nice to have. You also want to have venture debt capabilities if possible. That's where banks make loans to startups, to their client base. And, you know, lending to startups is actually pretty rare across, you know, across the United States and across the world. But there are some banks and some of my favorite banks that actually do that. And you also, there, there's a little bit of a, this is a inside baseball kind of thing, but it's really helpful if your startup bank has a venture capital fund practice. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, but that is a, a product or service that maybe doesn't affect the startup directly, but is actually really helpful indirectly to the startup. So those are the big things. There's other things, you know, like um, wire services, you know, other kinds of, of kind of important, but not super important stuff that you want your bank to have. The next thing, next criteria is really customer service. I am a super customer service focused person and cruises ourselves. And one of the reasons for that is, you know, a startup, you don't have a lot of time. One of your kind of your most limiting factor is not usually capital, it's usually time. And so if you're dilly-dallying around waiting for your bank to get back to you, or they're not being responsive, or there's some intractable error that's lost in the depths of customer service and Zendesk, it can really cost you a lot of attention and time. And so you just don't really have time to afford that. And so you really want your bank to sign assign an account manager to you. I know a few of the banks I'm going to recommend have a great practice for that. You can always get a hold of the account manager. They're dedicated. They cover you and some of the other clients, but they're there to solve problems very quickly. And they usually have like, at least for crews, because we send them a lot of business, they have like, you know, within the hour, they'll get back to us, which is really powerful. And, and that's kind of touching on another subject. It's not just important to have good customer service for you, the startup, but you also want your, your accounting firm to be able to get great customer service. And oftentimes, folks like Cruz, your accounting firm, are gonna have the questions. We're actually the ones that know what's going on at a real kind of detailed level. And so we're the ones asking the bank, what's going on with this? Or why didn't that wire go through? Or why can't I access bill pay? Or why is the credit card stuck? Or what's going on? And so letting us and having a good interface with us is actually, I might even say more important, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. And that saves you money on our bill too. Like we don't wanna spend a bunch of time dilly-dallying around with bank customer service. We wanna be super efficient. That's how our business model works. We typically work on fixed fee most of the time. And so we wanna be efficient. Having that direct correspondence is really, really important. The third criteria is what I'll just call technology. But it's at the simplest level, it's having really easy to navigate portals like web apps, mobile apps, you know, and a lot of the banks have gotten really good at this. They're putting a lot of money in it. And some of the newer banks, the technology centric banks I'm gonna recommend, have that's really where they started. They started as an app and, and making that app beautiful and easy to use. So I feel like this criteria has improved across the board. I, you know, three or four years ago, I would have said, oh my God, these bank apps and bank portals are just horrendous, but they actually have gotten a lot better and kudos to the, the big banks and kudos to the, the, the new entrants in the market that are pushing everyone. A couple other technology kind of nice things to have is integration with Plaid. At Cruise, we're pulling tons of information out of Plaid because we're, we're pretty technology forward. We write a lot of our own software and so it gives us a lot of great access and, and pulling data in a very efficient way. And that way we don't have to bother you either. So that's like one of the nice things. And also 
connections to the accounting software like QuickBooks, other like bill.com, stuff like that. That makes our life so much easier. You have no idea how many times we have to deal with like broken connections. And there's some credit card firms that we just absolutely will not work with because they're so bad. So that's again, one of those things where technology like great customer service at a bank is actually saving you money on your accounting bill. And it, it's, it's sometimes people don't make that direct connection, but it is very, very true. Believe me, I love it. Um, and then there's another kind of category which touched on briefly, which is venture capital relationships. So a lot of the big startup banks have really big venture capital fund practices. And so they're serving the venture capital funds, they're doing capital call loans, they're holding their cash, they're doing all the funding wires, all that stuff. And that helps your startup indirectly because guess what? They've got a ton of relationships with VCs. And oftentimes when a startup is doing well and going out to raise money, a lot of what they're trying to do is figure out which VCs to talk to and how do I get an introduction? And so your banks can actually be a great source of those introductions. They know exactly who the VCs are doing well. They know the fund sizes. They know they have their email address. They can just make those connections. So it's, it's kind of underrated, but having a venture capital practice at the bank is really, really helpful. So those are my big four criteria. There's a few other things, but that's, that's the big stuff. And then, you know, the banks that we see doing really, really well, I'll kind of break them up into three categories. It's, it's really the old standbys and old, you know, Silicon Valley bank isn't even that old. It's like 35 years old, but in, in Silicon Valley years, that's pretty old. I would say Silicon Valley bank and first Republic are the two premier kind of old school, super full service. We do everything or almost everything banks. And as I go down that list, that criteria, they, they check every box. I think, you know, first Republic actually has lending partners, so they don't lend off their, off their own balance sheet for venture debt, but SVB has a huge lending practice. And so those, those guys, you know, those firms really do hit every box and I would wholeheartedly recommend them. And at Cruz, we've, I think 90% of our client base is working with those two banks. So, you know, they're battle tested. We use them a lot. And very importantly, we have really clean, clear connections with those banks. Uh, the two startup banks that I see doing really well are Ro, RHO and Mercury. Both are, you know, startup oriented banks. They're new, they're technology companies. They're backed by venture capitalists. Both have raised a lot of money. Both have beautiful interfaces, really e easy to use software. And I, what I see is they're picking up a lot of market share. Both Roe and Mercury are doing really well. And then there's a, a, another group of banks that like Comerica and Bridge Bank that have been very strong in the startup ecosystem for a long time, but tend to skew a little bit bigger. Like Comerica, is, I, I don't know, I think they're like top 15 bank in the United States and Bridge Bank is, merge into a very large bank. So as your company scales, they have really deep lending resources that can do a lot of stuff for you. So those are the three subsets, you know, you're not going to go wrong with any of those picks. And sometimes it just kind of, you know, if you culturally fit with, you know, maybe the startup banks a little bit more, or, Hey, I, I don't want to take any chances. I want to have a very stable, very kind of embedded and with deep relationships bank, you might go with SVB or First Republic. But those are the criteria. Those are our recommendations. And I, I hope this helps. Picking a startup bank is, is, it feels easy, but it's not that easy. There's a lot of criteria. And if we can be helpful in discussing this stuff with you, just hit us up at Cruise Consulting. Thanks.